Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now going to be answering questions from the Pure Mathematics P4 <coughs> January 2022 International A Level Pearson at Excel exam. And um, these questions I'm, I'm going to answer will be um, question by question. So I'm going to start with question number one here, and I'm going to save that as a separate video, and then question two and three, and so on. In some cases, I might save even separate parts of questions in separate videos so that I can classify the questions according to the topic as well as the paper. So I'll put them into playlists. One playlist, for example, for this on the top of the screen at the end of the video will be the playlist for the whole of the paper. And at the bottom here, you'll have a playlist for the topic that this is from. That's what you'll find um, at the end of the video. Um, on the top of the card here, and there will be a card appearing from time to time in the video, which will take you to the playlist for this paper in case you want to see a different question as well. All right, so question number one here is about um, differentiation. We have to find the equation for the tangent to the curve C. So we've given the equation of this curve in a bit of a strange form. XY squared <coughs> equals XY squared plus 6. Sorry, XY squared equals X squared Y plus 6 where x and y and both cannot be zero. Find an equation for the tangent to the curve C at the point 2, 3, giving your answer in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are integers. Okay, now, so first of all, we want to find the equation of the tangent to the curve, which means we need to find the gradient of the curve at that point p. Okay, so we, we need to find the gradient of the curve. To find the gradient of the curve, we need to find the gradient function, which is dy dx, okay? Now, normally, we would have an equation, um, what you're used to, for example, say, from P1 and P2, you have an equa <coughs> equation where y is equal to some function of x, and then you have to just integrate, no, sorry, differentiate both sides with respect to x, and you have find what dy dx is. Now, in this case, what we have is something where it's not easy to make y the subject, so to write it in this form is going to be a bit difficult, and then to differentiate then will be difficult to do it in that way. So there's another, way that, another method that we're going to use to find what dy dx is, and it's based upon what differentiation actually is, which is, you know, when you find, when you've got, for example, y equals, uh, say, x cubed, and you want to find dy dx, what you're actually doing is you're differentiating both sides with respect to x. So I'm differentiating y, with respect to x, and I'm also differentiating x cubed with respect to x. That's what we're doing. So this gives us dy dx equals, and this is 3x squared. So that's actually what we're doing when we are finding, um, when we are differentiating something. We are doing what to one side of the equation, what we're doing to the other. That's actually, we don't normally write this step down here. We go straight from there to there. But this is actually what's happening. And it's always good to understand what's happening because then it makes you understand topics like what we're going to do now. So what we're going to do here is we're going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. So I'm going to differentiate this side with respect to x. Again, this what I'm writing here doesn't need to be written down, but I'm just trying to write it so you understand what's happening. And I'm differentiating the whole of this side also with respect to x. That's what we're doing. So when you differentiate this side with respect to x, okay, then you've got to... Um, use here what's called the product rule because you have a product of two separate functions okay which are multiplied by each other two a product of two separate functions so we are going to then use the product rule to do that and also x squared y is also um, a product of two separate functions and then you've got the plus six which if i differentiate that i'm going to get zero so actually this is this could also be further broken down if you want to just to make it a bit clearer this is dx squared y over dx plus, and you're differentiating 6 with respect to x, which is going to give you 0, as we know. So, um, as I said, up to now, none of these steps actually needed to be written down. We can go straight from here to the next line that I'm going to write. But this is just to give you an understanding of what's happening. We're differentiating both sides with respect to x. So that's the first thing when we have implicit differentiation. The second thing now, we want to differentiate this, this expression with respect to x. Now, this is, as I said, a product of two separate fu uh, um, a product of two separate functions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call one of them u. I'll say u equals x, and the other one I'm going to call it v. So v equals 
y squared. So I'm going to differentiate u and v. That's going to give me 1. Now when I differentiate v, I'm differentiating them with respect to x. I'm differentiating this with respect to x. So I'm differentiating y squared with respect to x. That's what we're doing. Now when you differentiate something like this, where y is actually some sort of function of x, because it's you know, y that is related to x. So when you differentiate this, you differentiate as normal. So you have 2 times y. Okay, so you multiply by the power and then take one from the power in this case. Then, because you have something inside the function, all right, you have to differentiate that as well and multiply it by what you've got. So basically, you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. It's like you've got y squared. And when you, when you differentiate that, that gives you 2 times y. And then multiplied by the differential of what's inside the function, which is dy dx. Just like when you have, for example x cubed plus 2 to the power of 6, for example. When you differentiate that, you say that's 6 times x cubed plus 2 to the power of 5. So you multiply by the power, take one from the power, and then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 3x squared. So what we've done here and here is the same thing. I'm multiplying by the power, taking one from the power. Then I'm multiplying by the differential of what's inside the function. Now we're differentiating with respect to x. So the differential of y with respect to x is dy dx. Okay, so when you differentiate something like this, you differentiate it as if it's, uh, you know, normal. But then if it's a y term, you must write dy dx at the end of it, multiplied by dy dx. And that, the reason for that is for this reason that I mentioned here. That's something that's important for you to understand. So when a y term is differentiated with respect to x, you differentiate it as normal and, you, and right next to it, dy dx. So that's going to be the differential of these two. I have to basically use the product rule where I'm going to multiply these two together and add those two. Now, most people do it the, this way, um, u, v dash, v dash, and then v, u dash. I like to do it the other way first. It doesn't make any difference for the product rule at all. So I have y squared times 1 plus x times 2y dx dy dx. So that's 2xy dy dx. I'm multiplying these two together and adding the product of those two. So x times 2y two, two is 2xy times dy dx. That's the differential of this side. Now, similarly, on this side, I have another product here. This time I have u equals x squared, and I have v equals y. So u dash is 2x, and v dash, well, you differentiate y with respect to x, you're going to get 1 times dy dx. So it ends up being dy dx. The differential of y with respect to x is dy dx. So then I do the same thing. I'm going to multiply these two together. So y times 2x, which is 2xy plus, and then x squared times dy dx. x squared dy dx. All right, so now I have now differentiated the whole of this expression. And I have got terms, dy dx terms. And I want to find what dy dx is at the point p, which is 2, 3. All right, so how do I find dy dx at the point p, 2, 3? Well, I could make dy dx the subject. I could rearrange it. It's not too difficult to do so. Bring the dy dx's on one side of the equation and the non-dy dx terms on the other, and then divide to find an expression for dy dx. But because I want to find the gradient at the point where um, x is 2 and y is 3, then it's much easier for me, instead of doing all the algebraic manipulation, to just substitute instead of um, whoops, y, 3 instead of x, 2. So instead of y, I'm going to put 3, so this is going to be 3 squared. Instead of x, I'm going to put 2, so that'll be 2 times 2. That's going to be y is 3, as I said, and you've got dy dx. Equals 2 times x, so 2 times 2 times y, which is 3, plus x squared, which is going to be 2 squared, which is going to give me 4 times dy dx. So let's just simplify that. That's 9, and that's 4 plus 2, 4 times 2, sorry, sorry, 4 times 3, which is 12, dy dx equals, that's 4 times 3, which is 12, plus 4 dy dx. So we've got here, um, bring the dy dx as one side, so you have 12 dy dx minus 4 dy dx equals 12 minus 9. So that's 8 times dy dx equals 3. So we can say that dy dx is equal to 3 over 8. So we're asked to find the gradient of the tangent. The tangent has the same gradient of the curve. So the gradient of the tangent is going to be 3 over 8, and it goes to the point 2, which is, um, the, sorry, point P, which is 2, 3. So we can find the equation of the curve here uh, very easily. Oops. 
find the equation of the curve very easily here. Uh, the equation, sorry, of the tangent very easily here. We got the equation of the tangent is a straight line. So y minus y1 equals the gradient m times x minus x1. Now I noticed a few people making mistakes um, when I actually set this paper for my students that one or two of them, they wrote down, they got everything right. They got the gradient of, they found what dy dx is. They found, they knew that we had to find out the, 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 the equation of the line at this point. But for some reason, they mistook and they put this as the gradient as minus 8 over 3, which would have been the equation of the normal at P, not the equation of the tangent. The equation of the tangent has the same gradient of the curve at that point, whereas the gradient of the normal is perpendicular to that. All right, so don't make that mistake, okay? That we we're finding the gradient of the tangent, not the gradient of the normal. If it was a normal, then we would find the negative reciprocal of our, our gradient and use that. But if the tangent has the same gradient of the curve, which is 3 over 8. So you have y minus y1, which is 3, equals m, 3 over 8, times x minus x1, which is 2. And that will give us, if I simplify it now, we have to write it in the form where ax plus by plus c equals 0, where a, b, and c are integers. So we have to um, basically get rid of the fraction. So I would do that by multiplying both sides by 8. So I have 8y minus 24. Now that 8 will cancel on this side. You're left with 3x minus 6. So if I bring everything on the side where x is positive, it's normally better. 3x minus 8y, and you've got minus 6 plus 24, which is plus 18, equals 0. So we can end up with 3x minus 8y plus 18. Now, some people leave it like this. This is not an equation. We're writing the equation of a straight line. You must put equals 0. Okay, you must put equals 0. Very, very important. Okay, many people leave it as 3x minus 8y plus 18 without the equal 0. We're writing the equation of a straight line. And the other thing that some people do is they will leave it in fraction form. So they'll leave it as 3 over 8x minus, for example, um, 3 over 4, and then add 3 to it. So they'll end up with something in the form where you have x, y, and the number equals 0, but the coefficient of x, y, um, x and y, and the number would be fractions instead of integers. They all must be integers. That's why I multiplied by 8 at this stage, to get rid of the fractions, because the question states a, b, and c are integers. Right? When it says in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0, we don't have to write a equals 3, b equals minus 8, and c equals 18. We could do, there's no harm in doing so, but there's no need to unless it says find the values of a, b, and c, or state the values of a, b, and c. It says in the form of this, then you leave it in this form, and that's fine. Okay? So that's the answer for question number one, to do with implicit differentiation. Um, as I said, it's slightly different from what we know from normal differentiation in other, um, specifically like P3 and, um, sorry, P, P2 and 1 and 3. In this case, we have to use this technique of implicit differentiation. When you can't make Y easily the subject, you differentiate each term on its own. And when you differentiate a Y term, you must write dy dx um, multiplied by dy dx at the end of it as I explained. So and that's the answer for this question. Um, other questions from this paper can be found by clicking on the playlist that should appear at the end of the video over here. Other questions from the topic of differentiation from P4 can be found in the playlist that should appear in this area. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.